Let's unbox the Hot Wheels Starships Select ATST. Villa Verrocchino. If it's Star Wars, we collect it. Hello there, thanks for visiting Villa Verrocchino. It was a really exciting toy hunt over the past weekend where we found the newest wave of Hot Wheels Starship Select Star Wars vehicles here in New Zealand. We picked up three from that new wave, the original trilogy ATST, the New Republic E-Wing Fighter and the prototype Imperial Shuttle. I've already opened up the New Republic E-Wing Fighter and next up I'm going to be opening up the original trilogy ATST. So of course this is isn't the first ATST in the line. There was one with Chewbacca released as a San Diego Comic Con exclusive a little while ago. We are international fans, it's hard to get our hands on San Diego Comic Con exclusives, and I had a feeling that we would have just a standard classic version released in the main line. And of course, that time has come. We now have just a standard one. So I don't feel too bad about not having that Comic Con exclusive. I'm really excited to get this one out and compare it alongside an iconic ATST. 80 as well. I think they're going to look really cool together. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Coming up really soon, I'll open this one up so we can check it all out a little bit better out of the box. But first, let's take one last look at the packaging. I really like the packaging style that Mattel uses for the Hot Wheels Starships Select line. In fact, I had quite a few of them before I finally got around to opening them up because I thought they looked really cool all lined up in their boxes. Now, Mattel has been very consistent with their packaging style, maintaining the same box design from the very first release. Though, of course, the Comic Con exclusives and some of the variants are slightly different in their presentations, but the main line uses the same packaging design, which is fantastic if you do like to keep your Star Wars collectibles mint in their packaging. They look really nice all lined up. We've got this fantastic big window here across the front that does link around to the sides to let in a little bit of light. Though of course we don't have a window at the top, just some printed images here. We have the Star Wars logo at the upper left, that nice big window there with the ATST just facing forward. Not angled, but it's pretty iconic from that front angle there. The Mattel logo, the Hot Wheels Starship Select logo, and underneath the window we have the ship name ATST there. On the top of course we don't have a window but we've got some really cool printed images here. We have a black and white blueprint style image here of the ATST again facing forward and we have the faction logo in red which of course is the imperial cog symbol there. On the top cardboard hanger we have the number for this particular vehicle 29 and the title there ATST. Really cool and of course moving on to the back we have a nice clear image here of the ATST on its display stand. A little bit different. Usually on these ships they are raised up so that they look like they're in flight, but of course ATST is a ground-based vehicle, so we just have a flat one-piece base. It's kind of funny we've got in the description here, it usually shows how the ships can rotate, but this is just a flat base. It's kind of funny to have a whole separate graphic for just the flat base when we can already see how the ship is going to sit on it there. And of course we can see some of the other vehicles in this particular assortment. We have a couple of reissued ships in this one, Darth Vader's TIE Advanced and the A-Wing Fighter, which were released previously, which means that if you already have these ones, there are just three new ships in this particular wave, which is helpful. We are missing a couple, so it's definitely good to have a second chance of tracking those ones down. The New Republic E-Wing Fighter and of course that fantastic prototype Imperial Shuttle with that unique white base there as well. Some fantastic ships in this assortment. The rest of the packaging is just the Mattel logo, copyright, barcode, all of that kind of stuff. Doesn't take up too much space, which I like, but overall looks really cool from the front. But I really want to see this one out so I can add it to my loose vehicle display. So let's get this one opened up. So now I have the ATST and the box containing the display stand out of the packaging. But first, I just want to take a really quick look at the background insert from inside the box. I always love this repeating blueprint style black and white artwork of the ships from this particular assortment. We can see the ATST, New Republic E Wing, Darth Vader's TIE Advance, the Imperial Shuttle, the A Wing. This is really fun. Fantastic to cut out and keep if you don't have the space or the inclination to keep the entire packaging. I 
just love seeing images of Star Wars ships like that, just kind of fun to keep. But of course, the main hero of the hour is this fantastic ATST. It's kind of funny that it took so long to get this one in the main line. This is number 29 in the line, but it is fantastic. And like I always say, it's really fun to finally get them in your hand because these are die cast metal and they each have kind of differing weights. You kind of get a slight sense of it in the packaging, but of course all of that cardboard and protective packaging does add to the weight. And I have to say this is actually heavier than I was expecting because of course it has these thin legs. I thought perhaps the top head part here of the cockpit would be a little bit sort of more on the lighter side, but I have to say it's actually got a good weight to it, which is really fun and it feels really sturdy. I love the ATST as an iconic Star Wars vehicle, but generally speaking, a lot of other versions are made from plastic. And because plastic often has hinges as a component to it, I'm thinking like some of the Hasbro ones, they can tend to fall over or just become a little bit more squashed and saggy over time. This is fully sculpted metal with no moving parts here in the legs. So as you can see, it stands up fantastically on its own. It's not sort of going to tip over, it's rock steady, and you know because this is metal, it's not going to sag over time. Look at that lovely level sort of uh, position there with that cockpit, just fantastic really cool and I can't wait to go over all of the details. So of course it is primarily metal but anything that moves or has sort of a pointed end to it is generally done in plastic for either construction or safety reasons and as I suspected I can see just a few plastic components here namely the weaponry because they generally have some pointed ends here and so so let's test it out. Okay so this part here the weaponry on this side can move. It's kind of tight. It doesn't really want to rotate all the way around. I can kind of position it up and down. It's got sort of like a light gray plastic and we've got a little bit of weathering there. Of course we have the weaponry here on the front which is painted with this really dark metallic silver which is really nice and we can tip this like a little bit up and down. It's not, it's not, I can't sort of point it all the way down. It kind of wants to stop about there. So I've got a little bit of movement. It goes up a little bit better than it goes down. You can see the range there, which is really fun. And of course, we have the sort of weaponry array on this side here as well, which like the other side, I can rotate it a little bit. This one actually has a bit more of a range of movement. I can get it kind of gets oh, a little bit stuck once I get it to there. But yeah. Of course, I'm not really going to point it towards the back. It looks cooler at the front. It is a little bit loose around here, so I'm probably not going to do a lot of spinning around. I'm just sort of going to find the position for it. I will say, because this is plastic, we do have a little bit of a flat plastic surface here. I kind of wish there was a little bit more paint on it just to kind of disguise that just sort of gloss that plastic has on that surface there. Just looks a little bit different to the metal of the cockpit over here, just in terms of color and sort of the finish there does look a little bit plastic but I have to say from the front or perhaps turning it from this side I like that position a lot better I think that I'll probably have it more facing it this way it looks really cool and of course one of the other big questions it was packaged facing forward perhaps maybe it will look maybe a bit been a bit cooler to sort of face it from the side but I want to see if the cockpit can actually rotate as well so let's give this a go Okay, I can get some movement here. It's very tight, feels it stops, uh, it stops about there and I can move it a little bit more this side, but that is fantastic and still steady. That's not really affecting its ability to balance at all. That looks really cool because of course the flat standing vehicles in the Starship's select line, we can't sort of rotate them on their display stands like we can at the Starships that have that ball attachment so you can rotate them around. These ones are simply going to stand on their bases so we can't sort of swivel them around on the base unless you actually just move the whole base, but we can get a little bit of angles with by changing the angle of the cockpit here at the top which is just fantastic. It's hard to tell because I can't reach my finger in to touch it. I can't see if this little attachment here is actually plastic or metal. You can kind of see the flat rivet there that's going to be sort of attaching through that centerpiece there but it is painted very dark and it doesn't look plastic. 
I have to say whether it is or not uh, it almost doesn't matter it's how it looks and that is really cool I like that I really wasn't sure if this was going to be able to move because sadly I don't have the comic con version so this is my first time opening this one up and to be honest even if I did have the comic con one I'm not entirely sure that I would have opened it a lot of exclusives just look a little cooler with their sort of celebratory exclusive packaging it to it as well so this is fantastic okay that's all the sort of the moving parts I want to check out just the incredible sculpted detail and the weathering so I have to mention I spotted two of these on the store shelf at my local toy store and I was able to do just a little bit of comparison with the paint job so of course it was a little bit easier just to see directly from the front because that's how they're packaged and I was mainly looking at the weathering here on these sort of shoulder pieces here on the legs and there was quite a lot of difference in the weathering on the two that I could see in my local toy store and I chose this one just something about the brush strokes on this one felt a little bit more natural the other one just kind of looked like it was done in sort of more of like a star shape I liked the ones here even though this one was actually the heavier weathering of the two I usually go for a slightly more subtle lighter weathering effect on my Hot Wheels ships but I actually liked the darker one here it just felt a little bit more battle worn rather than sort of like brush strokes there but now that I have it out of the box something actually caught my eye and this isn't as common in the Hot Wheels Starships select line I did notice when I was comparing the two through the plastic I thought wow that weathering on the cockpit is really consistent I couldn't see much difference I was like wow that's actually quite skillful now that it's out of the plastic I can see that this is actually tiny dots this is digital printing on the cockpit here and I can see that we actually have this really tiny tiny digital printing along here on the side because when I'm comparing the color of this weathering and this weathering this is much lighter so there is digital printing all the way down here I can see those tiny little dots coming all the way up here as well we have that around here underneath those little cockpit windows and I can see the dots here and coming around here which is just fascinating I really thought it was going to be like a wash like we generally see across this line I was really fascinated to see digital printing now looking at the top this looks like the standard sort of weathering style that I expect so really interesting to see that really lighter digital printing used for the weathering there which it could affect whether you are keen on that I don't mind it I like the consistency that I could see between the two examples on the toy store shelf and it's just interesting seeing how light but I can still see that sort of mottled effect it's really quite fun on the back here we have a little bit of weathering but not too much mostly along these edges I like the way that the weathering across this line really highlights all of the sculpting details there's something fun about the sort of the lines and textures of Star Wars starships that looks so cool in die cast metal and it just kind of really highlights it when we have all of this weathering of course a lot of the ships in Star Wars are battle worn they've got sort of carbon scoring and weathering on them and I really like the way that they sort of highlight the details with the weathering on it this one here it's just ah oh, just fantastic you can see all of that tiny detail on the legs here we've even got cutouts here on the legs and I just I love the fact that these don't move I gotta say I know for some people they want to sort of be able to pose them and things like that but I like just sort of the static display nature of the Hot Wheels Starship Select line I want them to sit on their display stands and look fantastic and the metal is just perfect for that of course I don't need to worry about any of these joints kind of softening or going a bit rubbery over time it's metal it's always going to look amazing and we can see it's not even hollow on the underside of the feet we've got that skull sculpted and painted detail there's weathering on the underside absolutely no surface none of the surfaces are sort of amiss with you know a lack of weathering or sculpting detail there just fantastic and we can see here along the tops of the legs here all of that fantastic weathering just so cool it's a shame it took so long to see this one in the main line but I understand they probably did that to kind of let the San Diego Comic Con sort of retain its exclusivity you know uh, to make sort of fans that were able to get their hands on that one sort of appreciate that they were the only ones that had the ATST so I understand why it took a while to get the standard one so of course the uh, exclusive one 
has the cockpit open because there is a Chewbacca figure in the top. This one, it doesn't open. This is just a sculpted cockpit. It's not like they've sort of just, you know, taken a figure out or anything like that. But I like this. It just looks really nice. I like the weathering there as well. We can sort of see the little round cockpit there. Fantastic details. And of course, we've got those tiny little sort of eyes, the cockpit windows here at the front. Now, the Hot Wheels Starship Select line generally doesn't have sort of cockpit windows that you can look through. They are painted with an opaque black gloss paint, which gives the illusion of windows, but they don't need to sculpt the interior. And I quite like that. So we can just see that gloss paint there. It gives it a sort of a sinister squinty eyes there on the vehicle. Just fantastic really cool. I just kind of wish there was just a little bit of paint here, but to be honest, I'm almost never able to find a flaw or something I don't like in the weathering and paint job across this line. So it's kind of, uh, you know, a little unusual that I'm like, I just wish there was a little bit more paint there. But to be honest, it's not, it's not a deal break here. I think this is fantastic. And I just love the fact that it can stand up so well on its own, even with those skinny little legs. Just fantastic. You know, sometimes you get toys, especially with these sort of two feet where one is like a little bit higher than the other, or they're not quite steady. So it always looks a little bit skew. Just dead straight. Fantastic. Not a wobble really nice and sturdy okay so let's get it on its display stand it's not going to look that much different but i still think it'll be cool so you can see instead of having the two pieces to raise up ships into a flight position this is a ground-based vehicle so we just have one sort of display base here so let's open up the box and it's wrapped up in tissue paper to protect that printing okay so let's open this one up here and we can see that we have a little affection symbol here in between the feet just a little bit dusty there we have the metallic silver foil there for the imperial cog symbol for the faction and this one is simply labeled as atst there and we see that we've got the sort of the impressions there of the feet so that's going to sit nicely there so it's not going to sort of slide off there and across on that front edge we have the star wars logo recessed there and the hot wheels flame logo here on the other side just hold on the underside with copyright information there so let's get this one into position on its display stand and oh okay this one is a little bit misaligned that is interesting okay I'll show you what's going on here so this we've got these little cutouts for the feet and it's going to be a little bit hard for the camera to focus on because it's black and shiny so the these positions are spaced apart and as I line them up they don't quite align. It's kind of clicking. The, the uh, spaces for the feet are wider than the feet on my particular example. Ah, oh, this is the first time I've ever had an issue with a base, to be honest. And it's not like I can change the distance of these legs to sort of widen them or adjust the position to fit that because they're locked in place. But I don't really know if I want to leave this on the base you can hear it clicking because i'm trying to sort of get it seated in but the feet positions are just narrower than the spaces on the base that is a shame i'm probably i don't know probably gonna have to it's it's not i feel like that's unsteady wow is this just an issue with my specific vehicle or is this going to be an issue across the line if the sculpting on the base doesn't match up to the actual finished constructed toy in terms of the spacing? I can't get that. It's just not going to happen. Solid object meets solid object and neither of them are fitting each other. Wow. Am I just going to have to put this one on the side like that? That is a real shame. I really love the bases of this line. It is such a winning factor because I love seeing all of the display bases all lined up. Am I going to have to buy a second one and test that out and see if that is an issue with my one or that's going to be something that went wrong in the production that this is not quite spaced right? Wow. That's a real shame. I was really excited to get this one on its display base because, of course, I also have the large and impressive at at and i was really keen to see these two together so of course if i take this one off you can see that the at at has the same sort of recesses there for the shape of the feet and this one 
matches in really nice so it's really sturdy locks in there so it's not going to slide around and we can still see that faction logo and the title there i was really looking forward to having this one alongside on its base as well and it's just oh dear that's that's very unfortunate but at least I can see these two side by side. So let's just put those unfortunate bases out of the way for a minute. So we can look at these two vehicles side by side. Because of course they are the iconic original trilogy walkers finally together. So of course the Hot Wheels Starships select line are not in scale to each other. They are all sort of scaled to fit within the same packaging box. Which I quite like. It means that we can get Star Destroyers next to ATSTs, You know and just sort of have a really fun assortment of some of our, our favorite iconic starships especially the larger ones that are done generally not done in other toy scales because you know we don't need to worry about figures fitting in them or anything like that we don't have sort of humanoid scale restrictions to that so of course these are not supposed to be in scale to each other and it's just really interesting seeing them side by side here because this one is a beast this one is one of my favorite versions of the 8080 in my collection I think it's fantastic it's the kind of thing that I would just buy multiples of it and just have it just in bookshelves and all sorts of display spaces around my home because of course we We've only got plastic here, the rest of it's fully metal. We can adjust the cockpit again like the ATST as well. So of course with metal you don't need to be as worried about that sort of yellowing of plastic. You know you can put these things in the sun. Of course this one it does have plastic here but I love it. And of course we can see those sturdy feet. Again no articulation in the legs, they are sculpted. You can even see these two toes are actually touching which does give it a little bit of extra stability nice and flat there on the desk and they look great together just a little bit of subtle difference in terms of the weathering style but of course they were released quite some time apart and I wouldn't expect them to be weathered in the same way especially on the legs but I think the weathering on this one works really well for this particular vehicle and this one looking a little bit more battle damaged there on the legs really cool I'm just sad about the display stand I really don't want to have to buy a stand I was collectible twice because of something being amiss but I'm really at a loss as to why that doesn't fit together because of course you think the actual collectors and fans buying this cannot adjust it they are riveted together you can see that rivet point there on the underside it's metal I can't adjust it and it just I love how securely it stands and I was looking forward to getting it on its display stand next to this one and alongside all of my other ships from the line on those fantastic flight stands. Everything looks fantastic with the matching stands but I can't put this one on its stand not unless I'd, I don't know do I glue it on there I don't like that wobble because I don't want this tipping over they are metal I don't want it damaging another object or myself you know these things are gonna hurt if you drop them on your feet because they are metal and we've got some I know they're plastic but still that's gonna hurt if you drop that and you don't want to have that damaging furniture or anything like that because we've just got all of these little metal edges here but it's just it doesn't feel sturdy on that display display base oh I'm so sad I was so excited by this one sometimes I feel like I'm just like this there isn't a thing that I'm like not understanding here it's just a flat base with the cutouts for the feet and it's just it can't sit flat I wish that the base cutouts were just a little wider so it actually fit okay on there like oh dear I still like the vehicle I think it looks fantastic but I have no idea why that is not fitting on that that is a real shame otherwise I love it but oh this is one of those cases where uh, sometimes you regret taking them out of the box because you don't know about the issues when they're packaged in the box. I would have lived blissfully on not aware that it wasn't going to sit on the stand but of course I wanted to open it, add it to the rest of my collection and now I have this base issue. That is a real shame otherwise fantastic but this is the first time that I've really been just genuinely let down by a Hot Wheels Starship Select product to be honest I'm probably going to track down a second one fingers crossed maybe it's just a one-off issue if you have picked up this one let me know if you have this issue with your display stand I really want to know oh well 
I still like the vehicle. I'm still glad that I have it in my collection. I just won't be using this stand, which is a shame. Oh well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today as I opened up another Star Wars collectible, checked out all of the details and had a bit of fun. <laughs> so thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope you have a wonderful morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are in the galaxy. And let's hang out again soon for more Star Wars fun. May the Force be with you. If you're a Hot Wheels Starship Select fan, I recently unboxed the New Republic E-Wing Fighter. That video is linked here in case you haven't already seen it, as well as a whole Hot Wheels Starship Select unboxing playlist. This is the way.